Hi everybody, this is Wes Comer and I'm just going to give you just a quick video uh, tutorial if you will on uh, how I handle digital inking in Adobe Illustrator and it all starts with a pencil sketch which you can see here. Uh, scan that in and pull it into Illustrator and then I use two brushes. Um, the first one is a one pixel in diameter with one point variation uh, pressure uh, round brush, very simple and straightforward, uh, and it gives me a, a fantastic line, or at least one that I really like. Um, and then the second one is basically a copy of that, except it's two points in round, and uh, you can see here two point, and then still one point of variation pressure. And um, just to kind of give you an idea of the, the line quality that I'm getting, and I'm doing my inking on a Wacom Cintiq. Oh, wrong brush. Okay, so we're going to go back to my first one here, the one point with one point of difference. And you can see how I get the, the nice thin to thick line just like a, you'd be able to get out of a, a real brush or a real uh, pen and ink. And uh, then it's back to kindergarten uh, where I simply trace Spend a lot of time trying to get the right lines. Illustrator has a nice uh, function where it will smooth the lines for you. You can set the variation on that. And uh, maybe at some later point I'll get into how I came to the settings that I have. But um, and they're very much just the default, the settings. Uh, I've tweaked them just barely. Um, but I, I really prefer this method. I used to used to handle inking originally by hand, um, way old school method. Um, and then I was doing everything in Flash because it has a lot of these features like the autocorrect. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by autocorrect. Like this line, you can kind of see how it adjusts after I draw. It gives a rough gives a rough preview, and then it will correct the smoothness. You can really see it when you do big curves back to back. It will try to figure out what you are wanting to do. Um, and sometimes it works for you and other times it works against you. Um, nine times out of ten it really helps me. And what's really fantastic about this is because sometimes I'm dealing with longer lines where it's hard for me to get just exactly what I'm looking for. So when I pull this down, if it's not exactly what I want, I can just select the handles. You can see how I can adjust that line. And I still have that thick to thin. If I were doing this in Photoshop, I, I, I just wouldn't have that kind of control. That's really what I need. I, now I'll, I'll often just delete the line, but like this one. See, this is where I needed to go. This is where I stopped. So if I try to try to match that, you get just a little bit of variance and maybe this is just me being a perfectionist, but I can't stand that. So what I'd rather do is delete that line. And then I'm going to pull this one down just by selecting that handle. And uh, then I can kind of clean up as I go up a little bit. Get rid of any overlaps that I may have too. So. And these characters are... Um, very simple in their design. Character design can't get a whole lot uh, more simple than this. It's lots of geometric shapes <laughs> uh, that just kind of work together to imply. I mean, on its own, that hand doesn't work. Um, but kind of as part of the whole, uh, I hate that this girl looks like she has webbed fingers. Uh, <laughs> But when you see the whole drawing together, it all kind of works. And especially at the size that these are reproduced, um, the, the details get lost a lot of times. Let's finish this one up and then I'll show you what it looks like. Finished product. I want to add a few more details in here. Some hairlines. It's okay that these 
crossover, it just kind of lends to that more hand-drawn look that I like. I'm going to give her some eyelashes. A little eyebrow. She's excited about what she's saying to this young man over here. And let me just turn off my pencil layer. And here you can see she is uh, all ready to go. Now the brilliance of doing this in Illustrator 2 is that I can group this all together. I can place her somewhere else if I decide that this gap is too large, which it actually is. I can scoot her in just a little bit. And that'll help them with their final layout to conserve a little bit of space. Um, and then also just being able to scale it down this is fantastic. Now I, I provide the finals for this all in um, in Photoshop files because that's what my client has requested. Uh, but I also supply these Illustrator files. That way if they ever need to go back in and pull these characters out specifically and use them for something else, if they're doing uh, promotional posters or they need it in a different size, smaller, larger, whatever, uh, they have this vector information that they can use, um, these vector illustrations, so they can just scale it up um, as large or small as they'd like. So just wanted to give you a quick peek into how I've been spending the last uh, few weeks, which is working on this assignment, uh, about 300 or so odd, some odd pieces, and uh, wanted to kind of give you a little glimpse into how it's all done. So see you next time.